Hi. Welcome to the catch up. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the vaccine and the, the vaccine. related death. So this week we are going to talk about um, the vaccine deaths in yeah. Norway or the alleged vaccine deaths in Norway. I also would like to talk a bit about the vaccine's effectiveness uh, with the new ver- variant strain. So yes. Norway has rolled out a massive uh, vaccination campaign and they started with, of course, the most vulnerable. So yeah. there were uh, cases of over 20 deaths in a nursing home in Norway. In the initial reports that I read, they were saying that they were caused directly due to the vaccines. But now that the major news uh, outlets are saying that there has no, there is no direct link to vaccines. But they did mm. take the vaccine and they died within uh, like a very short period of time okay. after taking the vaccine. Lah. Okay, I should say there is very little report about the death. I think that's the first thing that actually kind of caught me off guard because I actually heard of it from someone else. My wife told me like, oh, do you know there's vaccine deaths in Norway? And my first impression is like, bullshit. I read the news uh, every day, right? And I and I didn't see anything, right? And this oh, is oh, you not, didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. I felt it was very, very underreported, lah. When do you get the news? Uh, a couple of days ago, I think. But I try actually not to read as much news just because mm. it's quite depressing. Mm. Uh, but when I read about it, I actually read. Yeah, actually, you know what? What I read was Norway like confirms that it's not due to the vaccine. Oh, right. See, the first news you read was that there's no link, right? But where's the report of 13 deaths or now it's 33 deaths, right? From Norway. Where's that report? Right? Because when I heard that, I was like, that doesn't sound legit. And then I went online to check on just to make sure my wife is not fake news. I really had a hard time finding like, okay, there was like India Times and like Global Times, but I, I don't really recognize these news outlets. I was looking for the big boys, like, you know, like Guardian, like BBC, CNN, uh, New York Times and everything. To me, it's a very clear signal that news is not news, it's opinions. Are you suggesting that it was maybe covered up at first? I feel there is a global agenda to push vaccines like, because okay honestly speaking yes a news like that would really really hurt the confidence and it would really really hurt yeah. people will like oh, oh that, I'd rather not like I don't like you know it, yeah. it is quite a dangerous piece of news like, to be handled honestly speaking I'm not saying it's good for people to know but isn't news supposed to be neutral and objective right mm, okay I didn't think about it from that point of view I thought it was just me not reading the news as thoroughly as I should I really don't think that's the case Am I being paranoid? Or like, I mean, for I me, feel the same. my understanding of it is that when you have a vaccine like this, you prioritize like frontline yes. and also the, the most frail. vulnerable group. Correct. So obviously, like, I mean, our, our understanding pre-vaccine also of COVID-19 is that it affects the, the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions the hardest. These people are like in a nursing home. They all had pre-existing conditions. They are like the basically the people who would be the most affected if they were to contract the disease. So naturally, you would vaccinate them first. I mean, I think that's the thinking, right? They may not have been able to deal with certain things. Like, for example, there some of them after getting vaccinated, not just with the mm. COVID-19 vaccine, with any form of vaccine, yep. you may get symptoms such as fever, diarrhea. What they're saying is some of these symptoms are what did uh, this lot at the nursing home in because they they already so weak and they were unable to deal with it. Last. My thought was more like paranoia because my mom actually took a screenshot and sent to our family group chat that she has been one of those who has been like offered the vaccine. And to right, be because really your honest, mom's like, a nurse, right? Frontline, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. frontline. And then she's also over sixty. Okay, mom might be quite upset that I said her age, but <laughs> <laughs> auntie, you look not a day over forty five. <laughs> Oh, stop it, Andy. Stop studying <laughs> on, on Zoom. <laughs> Via me. Uh, no, no, but okay. In all um, honesty, right? I mean, I haven't really told her this, but I am slightly concerned. Just even before this news, just because I feel like this vaccine is so largely untested. I mean, obviously, if they've gone through some tests, but it's not been like a longitudinal sort of study on it because they just, we just haven't had that opportunity. I just wonder about the longer, mid to long term effects on people, mm. mostly my mom. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I think she's all for taking the vaccine. Norway has 
actually now shifted their statement to say that they the vaccine is safe, but perhaps they may not give it to people over a certain age, like which is what you're saying. Like, why did they do it in the first place? To be fair, like you said, lah, this is unprecedented. All the world leader leaders and all the news outlets are basically trying to tell people to like they have they know what's going on. But the truth be told is that if you have been around the world in, for long enough, like honestly. Nobody knows lah. Vaccines takes a decade to, to create, and it took them less than a year to come out with the vaccines. And now, like when someone's gonna tell you like, oh no, but we know everything. That's just not gonna be true lah. I don't believe that lah. They definitely there's a lot of things that is trial and error, but a step at a, they are learning as they are going like you know and they are doing their best and I salute them. I'm not trying to undermine anything. You're annoyed that they are pretending to know everything when. It's not possible to know everything at this point. I'm annoyed with the news outlets. We had a talk about this before, right? About the state of yeah. news now. But this kind of pushed me over. Like it's like the straw on the camel's back laugh for me because this is very blatant. So you have news pieces and you have opinion pieces, right? So what happened? What happens in the past is that there is a news and then there are opinions by journalists and stuff. And you read those opinions and we form our own opinions, right? But now the news is the opinion, right? They tell you like there's no da da da. This is this is this. This is that that that. Like Joe Biden, this this this. Like Trump, this this this. And like like this not objective at all. I understand it can never be truly objective, but it's really not objective now. And it scares me because now if instead of making me feel better, like oh I know what to do, it makes me feel like they don't know what's going on, and that scares me, right? Like shouldn't if you tell me what you know, and we we kind of try and you know, make our own opinions and understand and, and you know, just be a grown-up. I feel much better. La. Is it just me or, or do other people uh, feel this way? I think I don't feel as strongly. I mean, mm. I feel, I do know that, I mean, come on, we work in this line, right? Everyone has an agenda and I think you're right to say that perhaps they were very careful about reporting the death. It might have created a panic, you know, amongst like generally yes. people who like were thinking of getting the vaccine, they'd be like, oh my gosh, can die one now, okay, do one, do one, take, right? So I think there might have been some caution, but I think sometimes a little bit of caution is not a bad thing. And a lot of the experts that I've been reading uh, who've talked about this case is really a cost-benefit analysis. Like, okay, for example, yeah. like if you are 60 years old, like my mom, right? Very healthy. She has no pre-existing conditions. So would she be a good candidate for vaccination? Yes, on paper, yes. Right, and then like now that we know that perhaps the very frail who have pre-existing conditions like those over 80, for example, like their bodies may not be able to deal with the symptoms of the vaccination, mm -hmm. perhaps not the best candidate. So I think like everyone's kind of learning as you go along, which is very unfortunate though that people have had to die before we learn certain things, but it is just the way that COVID-19 is. So that's why I haven't really said anything to my mom because I feel like it's a cost benefit thing. Like what if she got COVID-19? Yeah. Right. That might be more. Would that be more detrimental to her, or would the symptoms of the vaccination be more detrimental yeah. to her? I don't know. In terms of the news, uh, and how they've dealt with it, I think that they're trying. Like, I would say it's not foolproof, and it is a bit worrying that the first time I read about this was Norway saying that there is no link, and not that not about the deaths per se. Right. On the Singapore side, Sing Health has actually written an article on the Health Exchange or SG website. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine myths busted. They debunked so-called the top five myths about the COVID-19 vaccine, that it was rushed out, is unsafe, that they should wait for other brands. Basically, the stuff that people are worried about, if you look at the statistics of it, hmm. yes, it's a very low percentage and yes, these people had pre-existing conditions. So I'm more inclined to think that it was due to that. But to be really honest, I don't know. And I don't think these people know it hmm. either. Okay, so all the worst news is more or less done. Um, yeah, so I think, like, maybe let us know. Do you agree with me where by the, there is reason to be concerned and also would you let your parents or grandparents take the vaccine la? next i also feel like okay uh, pro this is i feel very underreported that um there are actually things you can do because what actually really helps with covid defense right it's having a very strong uh immune system right so i've also been reading up the most widely reported and agreed among medical experts right it's that the vitamin d3 actually helps a lot so for the people that got very serious covid right most of them are d3 deficient they actually found a pattern right? so which means like 
you can actually one get into the sun more we are quite lucky because we are in singapore right so not like winter countries where you actually it's very hard to get sun so yeah. get out go out outdoors exercise that helps your immune system and exercise like if you're a guy topless like, or if you're a girl wear less like or like go to the beach or something and get more sun like. it really <laughs> helps and then you can also take vitamin d3 supplement um, i mean it's i guess it traveling does, it or whatever sense that the spread and everything was crazy in the colder countries so now is really the time to like eat right sleep right and then you know keep your stress levels down anything you just go and google like how to keep my immunity up right these are the common things you do but the, the vitamin d3 is not like a magic pill but it's healthy it, it doesn't hurt your body and it's a natural thing that we most humans are deficient in so i think it's a very easy low hanging fruit for us to do just take a d3 supplement and get into the sun more so that will actually really help that's good advice time yeah. to get out into the sun never mind yeah. the pigmentation and the freckles you don't yeah. want to get covid <laughs> exactly more important than uh, pigments and freckles <laughs> because cute fragments are cute uh, freckles are cute another concern um from people it's that there's the uk variants strain yeah. and then i think now there is an african one and there's like quite a number of you i think in america yeah. there's another one as well so like a lot of new strains like and a lot of people are saying that it's more transmissible but there are also reports that say that that's not proven basically again like it's like a huge mess of conflicting news all over the place the question now is is the vaccine going to help with the variant strains like? So do you have an answer mm. for that? Don't have, right? <laughs> because the truth is that there's no answer. <laughs> okay, but the good thing is that from everything I've read, right, they can't tell whether um, it is going to be just as effective, the vaccine. So for example, like the yeah. Pfizer one is 90% uh, effective, right? So maybe with the new vari variant strain, it's going to be a lower effectiveness, but chances are it's not going to be completely ineffective. So it's even more important for people to take the vaccine now so you can actually stop the transmission. Yeah. Final question is yes. if you were offered the vaccine now would you mm. take it if i'm healthy and i have no problem at the time yeah i would take it but it's a struggle you can tell what about you oh it's a struggle for me i feel like i am healthy and i get a lot of sun a lot of vitamin d3 but I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, this is a selfish thing to say, but I feel like we can make our own decisions. We are in Singapore and Taiwan, right? So these are basically two of the most COVID safe places yeah. in the world right now. Then what are our odds of getting COVID compared to getting the vaccine? If we get a vaccine, we get all yeah. the risk. The odds of getting COVID is low. You know, I've known, I mean, I've, I've seen articles and videos of people who got COVID. This is a very serious issue. So, if I'm in a very high risk place, I might be more like by the US lah. In California, one out of three. So if I'm in California okay. and I live there, I'm not and I can't leave that place, I'll probably like, yeah, I'll take the vaccine lah because like the risk reward ratio is much higher, right? Yeah. Well, let us know. Uh, you yeah. know, if you would take the vaccine, I don't know if you've been offered it, but yeah. just assume you've been offered the vaccine, whether you would rush out and be like, yes, vaccinate yeah. me now or are you going to wait? <laughs> Stay safe, guys. Get out in the sun. Remember? Get out in the sun. Take vitamin D. Be healthy. Sleep well. Um, quit your job. <laughs> you are too stressed. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy life, man. Wow. Not now, then yeah, when. Enjoy life. Yeah. Actually, I really think it's a reminder to enjoy life. Like Honestly, mm. it sounds very morbid, but you don't know when it'll end. So just yeah. enjoy no, life. No, really. If, like, if you want to do something, if you want to call someone, if you feel like, don't wait. Nah, your work can wait. Yeah. If you die, like your all your work will be replaced within two weeks. Everything morbid. that you're doing right now will be replaced within okay, two weeks. Okay, and this is morbid. Okay, bye. Uh, very morbid. <laughs> bye, guys. A lot of morbids, yeah. yeah. You think your clients will wait for you? Uh? Please, uh, they just jump to the nah. next influencer. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to care about you. Like, you think uh, they cannot replace me as an actor? Well, uh, please, uh, not even two weeks. Uh, two seconds.